Hi, Game Design Ed here, and I'm back playing around with Puzzle Explorer. Today, I want to show you how to make a player stop and think. Every puzzle we've built so far with Puzzle Explorer has made the player stop and think. That's what a puzzle does. It makes a player stop and think, and that's how Jesse Shell describes puzzles in his book, The Art of Game Design. Check out this book if you haven't yet. So if you want the player of your game to stop and think, then add a puzzle. Pretty simple, right? Well, not really. So how can we make a player stop and think? Well, let's travel to Antarctica, and I'll show you how to make a player stop and think. Let me build up a puzzle really quick here in Puzzle Explorer. The puzzle may look pretty complex from the beginning, but there's really only one thing the player can do. Move the explorer to the right. So the explorer moves to the right all the way across the top of the puzzle because of the slippery ice. Notice how the player has broken some ice on the way across. That's because I added some thin ice, which breaks after the explorer or a pushable object crosses it. So here we are in the top right corner. Now what can we do? Still only one thing. This time, move down. And we slide until we can't slide anymore, breaking a little more ice along the way. Still only one thing to do. This time, move left. So we slide across and break more ice again. Still only one thing. Slide up. So we slide up, breaking more ice. I thought this puzzle was meant to make the players stop and think. So far, there is nothing to think about. That's the trick. We're taking a puzzle that originally looked difficult, and we are making the player think it is easy. Let's continue. Still only one thing to do. Move to the right, breaking more ice. Still only one thing, moving down, breaking more ice. Now we're at the bottom of the puzzle and the puzzle looks totally different than it did when we started. It was a nice ice path to begin. Now it's an icy, watery mess. And there is more than one thing to do now. A puzzle that I thought was complex and then I thought was easy is now starting to get more complex again. It has presented me with a choice. I can't move right because there's water there. I could move up, but I would slide on that ice right into the water, so I have to move left. But should I continue moving left, across the thin ice, and into the crevasse? Or should I move left, and then push up the ice block into the water so I can cross to the middle of the puzzle? Let's stop and think. Here's a way you can get a player to stop and think. You give the player choices. If I move across the thin ice and into the crevasse, I would come out the crevasse in the top left of the screen and wouldn't have anywhere to go, except into the cold water that would restart the puzzle. If I push the ice block, I would have a bridge and be able to cross into the middle of the puzzle. So since pushing the ice block doesn't end in an instant loss, let's go that way. Now we're in the middle of the puzzle and we're presented with more options. Which way should I move? Let's stop and think. I can go in any of the four directions, down, up, left, or right. So, if you want to get the player to stop and think, don't just give them choices, give them multiple choices. Down would take me back to where I was, and we know that way only leads to one other way, to the crevasse and the cold water. If I move up, I would push the snowball onto the ice. If I move to the left, I would slide across the ice and push the ice block to the left into the water. If I move to the right, I would push the snowball into the water on the right. So what should I do? Let's stop and think. So not only do we give the player choices, and not only do we give the player multiple choices, we give the player multiple choices that each contain multiple choices that make the player think a few steps ahead. If I go down, we would have the options we've already discussed. If we go up, we could get the camera. But then we have more choices. We could push the snowball in front of the explorer down or to the right. If we go to the left, we would push the ice block into the water and then we'd be stuck. If we go to the right, we would push the snowball into the water, and we would be face to face with another snowball. Or we could go up, or we could go down. Let's go to the right and push the snowball into the water, and let's keep going to the right and push the next snowball into the water. Now what? We could move up, but would slide into the water. We could move down, but we would get on the ice and slide back to the left. And then our only option would be to slide up into the water, or slide back here. 
so let's just retrace our steps back to the middle and get the camera. But now what? Was that a waste of time? Let's stop and think. So we could go to the left and push this snowball into the water. Now we can slide down and then to the right, but we know we can only retrace our steps back to the middle. So let's just keep going to the left and push this next snowball into the water. Now we could go up and push the ice block into the crevasse, which would just make the ice block disappear. Or we could go left onto the snow bridge we just built with the snowball. Let's move to the left. Now we could move up. That builds another snow bridge and gives us access to this side of the crevasse. So now we could travel from one crevasse portal to another. Or we could push this ice block to the right into the water to our right. Or we could go around the ice block and then push it to the left and then push it into the top left corner. Or we could leave it there and be able to push it down later. Multiple choices that open up multiple choices that make us think a few steps ahead. What should we do? Let's stop and think. If we push the ice block to the right, what would it accomplish? Is there anything over there we need? It would give us access to the top of the screen again and maybe access to the camera in the top right corner. But there is still water up there that we can't cross. What if we walk around the ice block and push it to the left? We could push it to the top left corner and that wouldn't do anything for us. Or we could push it to the left and deal with it later. We could go through the portal and then come back through later and then push the ice block down. But what would that do? It would lead us to the next possibility, going through the crevasse portal. What would going through the crevasse portal do? It would give us access to the camera in the lower left corner. So, through the crevasse portal. Now we could get the camera or go to the right across some thin ice. Let's get the camera. We could go through the portal and then we could push the ice block down if we had tried that. But we have this snowball here already, so let's just fill this water with a snowball instead of the ice block. Now we have access to this ice block. We could push it either to the right or walk around it and push it to the left. What should we do? Let's stop and think. To the right, it would slide all the way across to the right. Then we could push it up to fill the water next to the camera in the upper right corner. We wouldn't be able to get the camera still, but we would be one step closer perhaps. Or we could walk around and push it to the left. And then we would push it either up to the upper left corner and not be able to do anything with it. Or we could push it into the crevasse and it would disappear. So let's push it to the right. Now how do we get to the block on the right? We have to step on the ice at a certain spot or we'll keep sliding off the path. There. Now we can push the ice block into the water by the camera. Now we have a pretty open puzzle. What to do now? We can push this snowball into the water so we can get the compass at the end. But now what? We still can't get the camera in the upper right corner. Maybe we could do something with that last ice block. But what? We could push it up, to the left, to the right, or down if we go through the crevasse portal first. What should we do? Let's stop and think. If we pushed it up, we would lose it in the crevasse. If we push it to the left, we could only push it to the top left corner or into the crevasse at the bottom right corner. If we push it to the right, it would go into the water and we wouldn't have another block to play with in order to get the camera. If we go through the portal and push it down, it would hit the glacial wall. Then we could push it either to the left, but we know that that would be a bad idea. Or we could push it to the right, and it would go all the way across to the right. And then we could push it to the top right corner, which would make it so we stop sliding right next to the camera. Let's do that. So we push it over here and then to the top right corner. Slide up here to get the camera. Then we just have to slide back down, step over, slide, and walk to the compass. If you want a player to stop and think, give the player multiple choices that each contain multiple choices that make the player think 
a few steps ahead. And that's how to make a player stop and think. I'm Game Design Ed. Thanks for playing.